guys welcome back to my youtube channel so for today's video we have a bit of a chatty get ready with me so i wanted to show you guys my makeup routine and just sort of do that on camera with you but i also wanted to have a little chat as well because i feel like i haven't done one of these in a really long time probably at least almost a year i'd say like since i've come on and done like a q a so let's get on with it so i'm just gonna start and do my skincare and then i will get the questions out i've got my makeup bag here this is my makeup bag. It's from Zara, but like literally years ago, but it's so good because it's so big. So this is what I keep it in sort of generally around the house. But um, if I'm going out or going, you know, away somewhere, not all that's happened for a little while. But then I would obviously sort of decanter it into like a smaller bag. Um, so let's just have a look. Okay. Right. And I'm going to get some of the questions up. That you guys asked me so i have quite a few questions about weddings obviously i know loads of you guys are interested in that so yeah let's start with that lots of people have said would love to hear about your wedding planning process i'm finding it overwhelming other people have said um like how are you finding planning a wedding in a pandemic uh, and yeah, just general chit chat like that really. So first up, I'm just gonna use the Espar Optimal Skin Pro Serum. I love this stuff, as you can tell, I've used quite a lot of it. This is like my second bottle now. You don't need loads of it though, so it does, oh, it does last you quite a long time. So um, yeah, and it just smells insane. It's just like, oh, it just feels really spa-like and yeah, it's just, beautifully hydrating on your skin especially at the moment my skin has just felt so dry and i think obviously it's just where the weather's got so cold like we were in minus temperatures up here in the north uh so yeah this is just the nicest stuff just feel like it really nourishes my skin so wedding planning so <laughs> Obviously, as we're in lockdown and stuff, I have hit a bit of a roadblock. So we have our venue and everything like that. I did do a wedding Q&A uh, for a few months ago now, so I'll, I'll, I'll link that down below if you're interested. But we have our venue and we have booked our band, our videographer, our photographer, and I've just booked the invites. So I feel like we are getting somewhere, but I can't really do anything else now until obviously lockdown's over and I could start looking for dresses um, or yeah. So I have hit a bit of a stop now, but we aren't getting married until 2022. So we have at least a year. Uh, so yeah, I'm not overly stressed about that right now. I'm a, I'm a little bit concerned that obviously coronavirus is still going to be potentially around by then, but I'm praying by then um, it's not anymore. But yeah, so that's kind of how it's going. I mean, uh, planning in a pandemic obviously isn't the way that I imagined to plan my wedding. Like obviously when you're younger and you think about, you know, planning your wedding and stuff, obviously I never imagined to do it like this, but then there's so many people that never imagined to, you know, go to university in a pandemic or give birth in a pandemic or be pregnant in a pandemic or just generally live in a pandemic. So it's not, I'm not like getting too sort of wound up in it. The only thing I'm using now, um, the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, but look, I'm literally scraping the barrel with this one. So I either need to get a new one or I'm going to try out a new moisturiser. I love this one, but I always like trying new stuff as well. So yeah, I've literally just got as much as I can out of that. So yeah, I mean, I obviously didn't plan to be planning it in a pandemic and it has been a little bit difficult, especially because we're planning to get married abroad, which is something that I've always wanted to do so obviously we haven't really been able to get over there and probably look at venues or you know try food or anything like that or meet anybody so it all has been very much done via email and facetime or you know video calls whatever um so yeah that has been a bit difficult but it hasn't been too bad like me and sam still made the most of it like we did all the calls together and stuff and yeah, it hasn't been too bad. The only thing I am slightly starting to worry about now is a dress, just because I actually wanted to get my dress designed and made, um, because actually I don't think a lot of people realize, but it's a lot cheaper than getting like a designer dress and they were the dresses that I was looking at. So yeah, I actually think I'm thinking about doing that, but the um, designer that I spoke to uh, said that she would have to start making it around February. 
and that's like February just coming up and obviously we're still going to be in lockdown then and I haven't even tried on a single dress uh, so next up I'm just going to use the Kiehl's creamy um, eye treatment this is a new one for me but I actually really really like it it's really nice um, so yeah haven't tried on any dresses yet so I don't really know what style dresses I like I mean, obviously I've looked on Pinterest and there's some that I've seen and I'm like, oh yeah, I really, really like that, but I don't actually, like, I've never tried it on. So, you know, obviously everybody says you end up going for a wedding dress that's like nothing like you thought you would. So I'm really conscious that I need to go and try some dresses on. Um, so I'm praying we come out of lockdown soon so that I can do that. And I'd also love to try my dresses on with like my mum and my bridesmaids and stuff like that, but obviously with the restrictions which I totally understand that's not really going to be as possible but again it's just not the way that I plan to like find my dream dress like just you know with everyone wearing masks and and like some what a bridal boutique said that they'd do it over zoom with my friends and stuff and as much as like that's really nice that they've like tried to work a way around it it's just not the way that I pictured it but anyway it is what it is so yeah I found it a little bit like difficult in some respects but also it's not been too bad. The only thing that obviously has been a factor is a lot of people who have postponed their weddings from 2020 and 2021 to 2022 has meant that um, things are getting booked up quite quickly. So I felt like I did have to move quite quickly when I was um, booking things. Sorry, I'm just using, I'm so bad at talking and telling you what I'm using. I'm just using the Summer Fridays um, lip butter balm, which is so nice, really, really nice. So yeah, that's about it with weddings really. The next thing to do is go try on some dresses and then hopefully in the summer when Sam has some time off work, depending on the situation, we will be able to go and look at the actual venue in person, hopefully. <laughs> so that's kind of the next thing. And then I guess when we're there, we'll try and meet with the florist and we'll try and meet with the caterers and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, the save the date should be going out sort of in the next few weeks, which is really exciting. I can't wait for people to get them. Um, we're planning on sending them out on our six year anniversary or like around that time so that people are kind of getting them then. But yeah, that's kind of it with wedding planning really. Um, sending my love to all of you brides who are trying to plan on a pandemic or are having to postpone or having a day that they didn't originally plan. It's been so tough on the wedding industry, really, really tough. And Oh, and sending my love to all of you who are working in the wedding industry that can't work at the moment. It's just, it's just rubbish. So next up, I am just going to do my face. And I think I'm going to use, yeah, let's go with this. Okay, so I'm going to use the By Terry CC Cellular Rose Serum just underneath my foundation. And the foundation I'm going to use is the Airbrush Flawless. And I'm using this in the shade 5 Cool. And then the By Terry one I use in the shade Sunny Flash. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of this on my face. And then I use this It Cosmetics brush, which is the number seven. So it has like a foundation brush on one end and a concealer brush on the other, which I find really helpful. So yeah, this foundation, I'm definitely not tanned enough to wear it at the moment, which is why I need a base that's a little bit more tanned. This is kind of more like my summer color, but I just never really got around to finding my winter color. <laughs> So we're just going to go with it. So let's see the next question. Okay, somebody said, if you weren't an influencer, what would you do as a career? By the way, this sunny flash, I always think it does go like really quite orange, which is why unless it's in the summer, I probably wouldn't wear it on its own. Um, but yeah, if I wasn't an influencer, what would I do? So I, you guys probably know because I do talk about it quite a lot, but I studied history and politics as my degree. And then I, hang on, I can't, <laughs> I can't concentrate. And then I worked in the House of Parliament for a little bit. I interned there. And then I worked for a charity. I worked for the Red Cross. <laughs> oh, I've just got a foundation on my lips, brilliant. And then I worked for a um, company that essentially managed the risk assessments for journalists going into war zones and stuff like that. Um, and my sort of dream job when I came out of uni was to work for a think tank, like um, doing policy research and stuff like that, working on public policy. That was kind of 
Oh, <laughs> that was kind of my main thing I was aiming towards. I actually did have a place on a master's studying public policy, which then probably in turn would have led on to something like that. Uh, I didn't really know. I don't really know what... I definitely would like to be doing something in politics and maybe something sort of working for a think tank or an NGO or um, a charity of some sort. So yeah, probably something like that. I do sometimes think about going back to uni and doing my masters and sort of obviously carrying on influencing but just doing it on the side. But then, I don't know, something always stops me and I don't know what it is but probably fear. <laughs> I don't know, I just... I can't decide. It's hard. I remember when I came out of uni, like I struggled so much to find a job. I think when you study those kind of subjects that aren't particularly vocational, so for example like English, history, politics, um, sociology, that those kind of subjects that aren't like medicine or accounting or whatever, it can be quite hard to find the career route that is right for you and um, I went through a lot of interviews and yeah, I just didn't really know <laughs> what I was doing or what I wanted to be or do. So I still don't really know, to be honest. Sometimes I think about doing a law conversion course and studying law, but then part of me thinks that I don't know if I'm cut out for that. So I don't know. Um, so next up, I'm gonna use the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. And again, just gonna use the other end of the brush and just dab it under my eyes this stuff makes such a difference if you are someone that struggles with dark under eyes i would fully 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 recommend this stuff it's really really good try not to put too much on because i think that's why i'm sort of getting creasing at the moment so the next question sorry i do feel like i went on off, off on a bit of a tangent there but <laughs> uh okay lots of puppy questions Somebody said, would you ever get another pup or is Rafi enough? A lot of people ask me this and no. <laughs> I wouldn't get another puppy for a while just because it's such a big responsibility having a dog and I just feel as though I, I'm just about managing with one, <laughs> let alone two. And Rafi's a big dog and, you know, having, and I think I would only want to get another dog of the same breed and having two big dogs I personally just would find that quite a lot of work quite hard work I, don't, I know they would entertain themselves and stuff but I found the puppy phase really really hard I don't know if maybe a second time around I'd find it a little bit easier but I definitely did struggle because you just I couldn't I couldn't do anything like I just had to literally sit and watch him 24-7 and yeah i don't know sam wants to get another one and i think rafi would love it because he's re he's a really sociable dog but i just don't think i could do it i just think it's too much too much commitment too much hard work and yeah i just don't really want to just yet i think i'd like to wait until at least we have children because i don't know i kind of plan to have children sort of in the next five years or so and i wouldn't want a really young puppy and children i think that would be really hard work Whereas I think, you know, Rafi will be, well, I can't find my concealer, hang on. Okay. Yeah, I think Rafi would be that little bit kind of older then. And yeah, so I think I'd definitely wait till we had kids and our kids were like a little bit more grown up and then I, then I probably would consider it. Uh, but yeah, definitely not at the moment. <laughs> um, I have got a like whole video about puppy training and stuff on my channel. So again, I'll link that down below too because I've got a few questions about like puppy training and stuff. So I'm gonna use the Bye Bye Under Eye Full Coverage Waterproof Concealer. This stuff is really full coverage, like you only need, really need a tiny amount. Again, I'm just gonna use the same brush. Okay, a few questions sort of about lockdown. So somebody said, how have you felt throughout lockdown? Has the third one been different slash harder? Yeah, this one has been so much harder than the first one. I'm just gonna pop this also like under my nose and on my chin as well. Got a little spot here as well I'm gonna cover. So yeah, this one has been so much harder than the first one and I think it's for a number of reasons. Obviously the first one, it was such a novelty. You know, we hadn't had all this time before. It was like so kind of nice to have all that time. Uh, Sam was off work, so it was nice to spend time with him. The weather was lovely. And yeah, it was just like 
I'm not gonna lie, some of the times it was quite nice. Um, but this lockdown, obviously the weather's crap, it rains all the time, so you can't really go out and do that much outside, whereas before at least you could sort of, you know, go for really long walks or whatever. But yeah, the weather's been crap, it's just miserable, it's dark all the time. <laughs> Sam's back at work, so it's just me, so I've obviously felt a little bit more kind of lonely. I also think where it's been January, and it's like January the 1st, and it's like New Year, and I think that's been quite hard to cope with the fact that it's a new year and normally like new years for me I love them because I do feel like they're a really nice like start and you can sort of you know make goals and work on sort of achieving them and stuff but this year it's just felt like new year same shit do you know what I mean <laughs> so I think that's quite demotivating as well and I think it just oh, it's just hard to look back and be like almost a year ago we were in this exact same position and nothing's changed in fact it's got worse and I can find that quite like demoralizing sometimes but I suppose in a way, at least we kind of know how to deal with it a little bit more. But also it's hard like with work and stuff. Like obviously I wanna bring you guys, you know, content all the time and outfits and videos and stuff like that. But actually like I've been feeling quite crap and sometimes I find it hard to shoot content. Obviously in lockdown, like you can't, I can't shoot in my normal places and, uh, I, sometimes I'm like god like my life is so boring I don't know what to film because we're just stuck in so in terms of work I found it probably more difficult too um so yeah I, I have definitely struggled more this lockdown I really 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 miss my family I have obviously like things going on at home that I wish I could be at home for and yeah so yeah it's not been great <laughs> but <clears throat> we're getting there hopefully I'm praying that we're going to be out of this soon I really really pray <laughs> So a few people have asked, um, so next up I'm going to use the Glossier Cloud Paint in the shade Puff. Again, you only need a tiny weeny bit of this. I actually use like a Kabuki style brush for this. But I just dab a little bit of this sort of on my cheeks, my cheekbones. And then just blend that in. So yeah, somebody's asked, do you think we're going to be allowed to travel by the summer and are you going to book anywhere? Uh, I'm praying we're <laughs> gonna be allowed to travel by the summer. I love traveling so so much It's just one of the things that ever since I was young. I've just absolutely loved doing uh, And it makes me so happy. It's where I'm at my happiest hundred percent So I'm praying that we can travel in the summer uh, We'll definitely be going over to see our wedding venue if we can So that'll be one place we'll be going. I, we're probably gonna keep it relatively sort of, you know, short haul probably Europe I don't know, I haven't even really thought about it because it seems so far away, but you know, I don't know, maybe go back to Greece or Italy or Spain. I just love Spain. I'll probably end up just going to Ibiza because I love it there. So yeah, I haven't really thought about it yet, but I definitely should start thinking about it. But part of me doesn't want to sort of book anything before we know sort of what is going on. So yeah, I don't know. So next up, I'm gonna use the Anastasia Beverly Hills just to uh, pop a little bit of highlights. So I'm gonna use this shade here, which is Moonstone. And I just use this Zoeva brush, which is the 230 brush. And I just pop it on my inner corner, just to try and brighten it up a little bit. Again, I have, you know, dark circles and darkness sort of around this area. So I do do this to try and just brighten it up. Oh my God, I've just realized I've forgotten bronzer. Not that I really need it because my face is quite bronzed right now. This is the problem when I chat. I just totally forget what I'm doing. So I normally use the Chanel bronzer. To be honest, my face is quite bronzed from the by Terry. So I'll just pop a little bit on. I normally do bronzer before blush. Whoops. I also am just going to pop a little bit of powder under my eyes. This is the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in the shade Medium. So next up, I'm gonna pop some Hoola just uh, on my eyelids. I'm just using a Real Techniques brush. I don't actually even know what this one is, 300? Just pop a little bit of this on just to give a little bit of color. So yeah, somebody said, and somebody said, what three things would you take with you on a desert island? That's really hard. <laughs> Do you know what? It's something that I've never really thought about. I'd probably take, obviously, my phone. Is that would that count as a thing? 
I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. Take my phone. I'd probably take Sam. Is Can he be a thing? <laughs> and... Oh, God, I don't know. Like, a good SPF? <laughs> that was so boring. Sorry, I'm just using Moonstone again. Just on my brow bone. Yeah, I don't know. What do people normally say? People normally say, like, food and stuff. A fishing rod to go fishing. Don't know, I've never thought about that, you know. <laughs> just going to pop some of the NARS Orgasm lip balm on my lips. This stuff is great if you don't want to wear, you know, a lipstick or anything, but you still want a little bit of colour. Okay, so next up I'm going to use the Refi Brow Pencil, my brows, to fill out some of the areas. I have had, I have, oh, I have had them laminated a little while ago now, but I just like to fill in a few of the gaps. So I've just used the Collection 2000 Clear Mascara on my brows, just to make them sort of a little bit bushier. <laughs> I know some people don't like that look. So uh, next question is, what advice would you give your 18 year old self? So when I was 18, I was in uni, I was in my first year. I hadn't met Sam yet, if we're talking about like when I just turned 18. Uh, I feel like one of the main pieces of advice I would give myself is don't feel pressured into doing stuff just to seem kind of cool. Does that make sense? Like, I remember at uni there was such a huge amount of sort of pressure around, you know, going out every single night and getting really drunk and having these like crazy stories the next morning that you did all this crazy shit. And there was a lot of kind of, I don't know, people being like, not interested in their course, never going to lectures, just purely there just to literally like piss about. And I was never like that. Like I was, maybe I was a bit of a teacher's pet and stuff. I don't get me wrong. I did not go to all my lectures, but I wasn't like a huge drinker and I wasn't up for going out every single night. But at uni when, when I went and maybe the friend group I had, it kind of was made to feel like you weren't cool if you didn't do that. Uh, so, and I remember kind of doubting myself quite a lot and yeah, so I'd probably just go back and say, you don't need to, you know, be going out all the time and sort of pretending you're having all this fun to people, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, I'd probably just say, sort of be more confident in who you are as a person and don't feel like you need to change that to fit in, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that'd probably be one of the main ones that I would say. Another thing I would definitely tell my 18 year old self is to just like, love yourself enjoy who you are and your body and love it because it was so beautiful and you know like i look back now and i think oh god like i wish i looked like i did when i was 18 but i remember being 18 and hating my body so i'd probably just i'd probably just tell myself to have more confidence in the way i look and the person i am kind of thing so yeah that's probably the advice i would give my 18 year old self and probably also the advice i would give to myself <laughs> now so yeah so next up for mascara i'm going to use the benefit bad gal bang this is a mascara that i've recently rediscovered and i've been really liking it sorry pull the funniest faces when i do this okay so one of the questions is since you've moved around quite a bit what do you do to feel at home in a new place slash city and this is a good question uh so yeah we've moved around a lot as in a relation in the relationship i've been in with sam sort of we've lived in sort of five or six different places and sometimes i don't really feel at home and other times i do i think the main thing that i can say to help you feel at home is to throw yourself into the city that you're in not constantly sort of be going back to your old place you were in or obviously you can still you know do that every now and then if you have friends back there and stuff but also just try and make this new city a place that you want to be so whether that's 
sort of exploring more, you know, finding really good restaurants and shops and stuff, finding a place that you really, really love there, finding really nice walks. Obviously having friends there does really, really help and make it feel more like home. Also the space that you live in, whether you're, you know, renting or you've bought somewhere or whatever, just making that feel really homely. So candles, you know, pictures, everything like that. I remember when we uh, would rent sort of for a short period of time, I would always bring like candles and photo frames and stuff like that just to make it feel more like home. You know, bring a diffuser that smells like home. So it's, you know, just giving you that kind of like homely feel. But yeah, I think a lot of it for me, whenever I'm, you know, moving to a new place, I always look up the best restaurants to go to, the best shops, the best parks, like all that stuff, just so that you can really kind of appreciate the nice things about your new place. So I find that really, really helps. As I said, sort of making friends in the area, which I know is hard, but also having commitments in the area too. So whether that's a gym membership or I don't know, like workout classes or I don't know, other kind of hobbies that keep you in that area kind of thing. And that just make you feel like your life has a little bit more routine in that sort of place. So for example, I found like a Pilates class that I love going to around here. So it's nice for me, like when I'm going to the class, it feels a lot more like home, do you know what I mean? Because I'm doing a normal thing that I would have done had I lived back, you know, at home. That makes sense. So yeah, I mean, I'd also say Rafi has really helped me feel like this place is home. I uh, just feel like the house did really become like a home when we got him. And now I'm obviously in the routine of walking him every day and stuff like that. And I don't know, talking to other dog walkers and just that whole thing that comes with having a dog has really made it feel so homely here. And just obviously having his company as well. So yeah, it, it, is, it can be really difficult, especially if you're in a place that you don't really want to be in, but you have to kind of throw yourself into that place. And I would say the same about like uni, for example, as well. If you're constantly going back to your home and you're not really kind of throwing yourself into sort of being at uni and maybe joining clubs or enjoying the area that you live in, then you're probably not going to really enjoy yourself. So yeah, that's probably what I would say for that one. So I've not popped any highlight on my cheeks or anything just because I feel like I don't really need it for day to day, but I would normally use the Iconic Illuminator just to drop on my cheeks here. But I don't really feel like I need it today because I'm literally just like around the house, so yeah. <laughs> okay, and then lastly for my lips, I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Liner and then the Pillow Talk Lipstick as well. Okay, so somebody said, what brings you joy these days? So I'd say, Obviously, it's the really little things at the moment that are bringing me joy. So walking the dog, like finding new walks for him around this kind of area. I find that really nice. Me and Sam actually went on like a 15k walk the other day and just found loads. Of, and we were just walking and just taking turns. We weren't like looking at phones or maps or anything like that. And we actually stumbled across some really nice areas. So I really, really enjoy doing that. And I just feel like it's such a nice sense of achievement when you get home and you've done like a really nice long walk. Cooking is actually bringing me a lot of joy and it's so funny like a year ago I probably wouldn't have said that I've never hugely been a massive love of cooking, but I've so got into it recently So yeah, that is bringing me a lot of joy having like a nice tidy clean home and doing things like lighting candles uh, You know just stuff like that sort of rejigging rooms like we moved our lounge around and stuff a little bit Just sort of homey things, you know buying home stuff <laughs> also bringing me joy that sort of thing, being on Pinterest and looking at um, homes, weddings, everything like that. Like the wedding planning is bringing me joy as well. So yeah, definitely like looking at wedding inspo, I'm really enjoying. Just like chilling out, you know, putting the fire on, just making it a really like cozy, nice space to be in. Um, watching stuff with Sam, getting into a really good series. That kind of thing really, very like simple pleasures getting a takeaway on a Saturday. <laughs> it really is the really simple pleasures that are bringing me joy. Uh, and yeah, I guess I know, you know, there's so many things that we're not doing at the moment that do normally bring joy, but hopefully being able to find joy in the simple things will make us appreciate the bigger things even more kind of thing. So yeah, having a lion, having a slower like pace as well. I'm really enjoying that. Like I wake up in the morning and I'm like, eh, I could have like 20 more minutes more sleep. Like, what have I got to do? Where have I got to go? Do you know what I mean? So yeah, that sort of thing is definitely bringing me joy. Baking as well. I do some baking every now and then and I really like it when I do it. Moving, like my body likes doing Pilates and stuff. I always feel better for it afterwards. So yeah, just that kind of thing really. Pampering myself, face masks, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, so that is just the pencil and then I'm gonna pop some lipstick. 
over the top. And then I'm just gonna pop some of the iconic rollable oils over the top, just to give like that kind of glossy effect. Okay, and then lastly, which I probably should have done before I did my lips, to be honest, but I'm just gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. I got this for Christmas. And it's so nice, it comes out in a really nice mist and it smells really nice. Mm, smells lush. So that is the finished makeup look. So I'm just coming a little bit closer so you can see the coverage of the foundation and everything. So yeah, this is the kind of makeup that I would do if I have a day of filming or something like that. Most times I don't really wear a lot of makeup and I'll normally just wear like the Charlotte Tilbury Ooh. <laughs> the Charlotte Tilbury Healthy Glow, which is just like a nice, sort of like a CC cream. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I really hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for sending the questions in and it's been so nice to chat with you guys. And as I said, I will link everything in the description box below. I am uploading on YouTube way more regularly now. So I'm uploading on every Tuesday and every Sunday. So I hope that you guys enjoy all the new content. And if you do, I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel. I also am gonna have a giveaway going on over here on YouTube. So do look out for that, It'll probably be in my next video. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.